you will never forget it. And it will keep you from darkness. It will keep you looking for the light. It will keep you focused on the word of God. The spirit of God will set you free. And it will set your household free. Hallelujah. This spirit will set your sons and your daughters, your brothers and your sisters, your wives and your husbands, your grandparents, your parents. They will, it will, he will set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible declares that he who the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. I'm praying for my household. I'm praying for my family. Because that's where revival starts first. That's where the Holy Ghost moves first. Hallelujah. Because if it's overflowing in you, Lord have mercy. When overflow is going to hit somebody else. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I pray, I pray that this no longer be church as usual. Church by the program. Church by the protocol. Hallelujah. But a church that will change lives. Hallelujah. You won't have to go home to adultery no more. You won't have to go home to fornication anymore. You won't have to go home to lying anymore. You won't have to go home to cheating and stealing anymore. Hallelujah. Because the Son that has set you free. Hallelujah. The Bible declares here as we stand. Because they stood in Ezra's day when the word was proclaimed. The Bible declares in Acts 2 that on the day of Pentecost, when it had fully come, hallelujah, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house, all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem and Judea Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and they were confounded because that every man heard them speak in their own language. Hallelujah. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear ye every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, Emilites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, and Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Hygira, Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Creeds and Arabians, where do we hear speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God? And they were all amazed and in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mark and said, marking and said, these men are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and of all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant and on my handmaiden I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. 
And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, ye people of Chesapeake, Virginia Beach, Hampton, New York, hallelujah, Michigan, Georgia, Florida, all over this world, hallelujah, hallelujah. We stand a man approved of God. By miracles and wonders and signs with God did he by him in the midst of you. And ye yourselves also knew him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. Have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God has raised up, loose the pain of death. Loose the pains of death. Loose the pains of sickness. Loose the pains of defeat. Loose the pains of lack of dominion. Because it was not possible that he should be holding it. For David spoke concerning him and I saw the Lord always before my face. And he is in my right hand. And that I shall not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice. And my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. And thou shalt make me full of joy with my countenance. With thy countenance. Men and brethren. Women and children. Let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he was born and now dead and buried. Yes, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him. That of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh yes. he would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He sinned, this being spake of, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that this soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. And he, Jesus, had God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, by the right hand of God, exalted and having received the Father, the promise, received of the Father, the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has showed forth this, which ye see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heaven, but shall say himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God, yes, hallelujah, hath made the same Jesus, this same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent! And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But this promise, the promise is unto you and unto your children. Hallelujah. And to everyone in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin is unto you. Your children, as many as the Lord your God shall call, and with many other words did they testify and exalt, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this wicked and perverse generation. Hallelujah. Then they gladly received that glad received the words were baptized and the same day 
were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and their fellowship, and the breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together, and had all things common. Sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church. The Lord added to the church. The Lord. The Lord added to the church. Daily. Hallelujah. You might go to work tomorrow, but God can add to the church on Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Yeah. Hallelujah. We speak of this promise because this promise is not only a better way, yeah. but it's the best way. Yeah. Hallelujah. He is an experience that you will never forget. The Bible declares that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. And that means that there are some elements about this text that's very important. Hallelujah. One is timing. Hallelujah. Because timing is so very, very important. And when the fullness of time had come, God stepped down and filled the house. When we evangelize, there are some things that we must recognize. Be able to understand that that this process is just not something that you just walk into. Because it takes four things to happen before you experience the success of the Holy Ghost. One is that you have to prepare your soul. Two, then you sow that seed. Three, is that you cultivate and take care of that body. you do with your body, what you say out of your body, what you hear in your body. Because you are sanctifying yourself for to receive the blessed Holy Ghost power. Why do I need the Holy Ghost? Because it's an experience that you will not regret. Hallelujah. He is an experience that you will not forget. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must take care of ourselves. your spirit because God is getting ready to fill you and I understand I understand I understand if you can't stand the pressure of true holiness hallelujah I understand if, you're, if, if your soul is not right you can't take this somebody says why you make so much noise well when you go out on the football field they're making so much noise. Hallelujah. And maybe they say because we're outside. But when the LeBron James slam dunk on the other on the night, they were on the inside. Hallelujah. Rejoice. This is the greatest experience that you would ever, ever have. Hallelujah. And I want it so that everybody around me will burn until they get it. That's how bad I want it. That's how bad I want the, I don't just want the Holy Ghost, I want the overflow in the Holy Ghost. So we can't wait to Pentecost to celebrate Pentecost. This celebration has got to be a day-to-day -day experience. And we have to do it in spirit and in truth. So if you ask the Lord, 
you don't have it, if you don't have it, ask the Lord for it. If you do have it, pray for an overflow. And if you overflow, pray that the overflow keeps right on continuing. Hallelujah. Because not only do you need them, but somebody around you need them. Hallelujah. When that young man detonated that bomb on the other day in England, a whole lot of people were affected. Hallelujah. People are dying. And Bishop Henderson said, I don't take for granted just because you look all shocked and all grim and all ready. I'm not taking for granted that you got, that you received since you believe. That's what it said in the word. It said after they had heard the word, they were baptized in the field. This is the most important experience that you would ever have in life. You can go to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Our brother O.J. Simpson had one of the greatest experiences in life. He was at the top of the world. Yes, the day he sits in jail. And I pray that sitting behind bars that he would have the greatest experience that he could ever have. Not on the football field. Not in the movie theater. But with God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, give us the breakthrough that we experience in the spirit realm just a few minutes ago. Let it continue as we hunger and thirst after more of you. Lord Jesus, shower down when we need this place so that our lives will be clothed with truth and righteousness. This will be the fruit and the result of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We will love our wives better. We will love our husbands better. We will love our children better. We will appreciate the, the air that we breathe. Hallelujah. The sounds that we hear. God, hallelujah, let this Holy Ghost fill us like that. Let it rain on the inside like never before. Until change and growth and maturity take place. God, regardless of what age we are, let maturity take place. Because the Holy Ghost is the intelligent one. It's the intel that we need. And he is the adult in the room. He is the adult of my spirit. Hallelujah. Wash me and fill me. Hallelujah. 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 If you want to touch that glory again, come on. Hallelujah to the altar.